Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so thanks. Thank you very much. I'd like to, you know, thanks to South Kent School for inviting me here tonight. Um, thanks to Mr. Darren. Thanks to you know all the teachers who invited me into the classrooms this morning. We had some great workshops. Um, come on in if you're late. Find find space. It's th there's a couple seats still open. Um, maybe up in the balcony. So um, and, and thanks to all of you for for coming here tonight. I'm, we're going to talk a lot tonight. We're going to go on a, a journey together, and um, hopefully, you know, we're going to talk about what what makes a hero. Like that's the question that I hope that we'll answer tonight, and you know, hopefully this um, this hour will, will be valuable to you. And we're going to start with a question. Um, the question is, what is your favorite story? Yeah, I really want answers. Don't be shy. What's your favorite story? Your favorite book, your favorite movie? Hunger, Hunger Games, good one, yeah? Uh, Harry, Potter. Harry Potter, okay, another good one? Star Wars. Star Wars? What did you say, something rising? No. Oh. <laughs> Star Wars, Hunger Games, Harry Potter, what else? He said Red Rising. Red Rising? Man. Great book, yes. <laughs> so, Eaters of the Dead, say what? Blue Mountain State. Blue Mountain State, interesting. That's a, that's a TV show, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption, that's a Prison good Break. example. Yeah. Prison Break, also a TV show. I've heard of that, yeah. Was another one up here? No? <laughs> Wall Street? Wolf of Wall, Wolf of Wall Street. Street, interesting, yeah? Goon? Is that a movie? Yeah. All right. Um, interesting. Okay, so second question. Second question. This is part two of the first question. Um, and this is going to work better. It's not going to work so well with the uh, TV shows, the serials, but the books or the movies, the kind of standalone, uh, this will work really well. So think of those. And we got, we got Harry Potter. We got um, Hunger Games. We got Star Wars. Eaters of the Dead is actually a really great example. Did you guys have to read that this year? Yeah. Fourth form? All right, we'll come back to that later. Um, what else, what else? Like Shawshank Redemption, another good one? All right, so here's the question. Who is the hero of that story? Ibn Fatsh, okay. Is it, is it Ibn? Or is he the narrator? And is... No, he's the hero. He goes on a journey. Okay, okay, good. I like that. I, could be Ragnar? All right. What about Hunger Games? Who's the hero of Hunger Games? Katniss, Katniss Everdeen. Who's the hero of Harry Potter books? Harry Potter, Harry Potter yeah. You know, Hermione also in a way, Ron in a way. Um, Shawshank Redemption. What's the guy's name? Morgan Freeman. Um, what's another one? Star Wars. We had Star Wars. Who's the hero? Is it Luke? We're old school? Luke? All right. Um, so whatever your favorite story is. I mean, these are some great examples. But for your own personal favorite story, keep it in mind as we watch this video. What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge. Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. 
Five o'clock. Approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock. Crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock. Treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition, or power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero, or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely, but let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey, Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well, you're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then do it all over again. All right. All right, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. So, yeah, this was a project that uh, I helped, I, you know, wrote the script for this and, and read the narrative um, and partnered with a, a really gifted animator, Kirill Yoretsky, who's credited on this. And it's, it's posted at the TED Ed uh, website. So, um, 3.7 million views now. So, we're, we're getting there. Um, but what I want to do is take a look at this. Um, you know, does this really work? Do you, do you believe this? Does this fit the story that you had in mind? You know, some of the stories that we called out before the video. What do you think? Do you believe it? No? You don't think so? It doesn't fit? Yes? yes. yes? Okay. okay. Let's, let's, let's try one out. I mean, you know, Katniss Everdeen, Hunger Games, we started that. Um, I see a lot of nodding heads, but um, Yellow Windbreaker, shaking his head. What's your story? Is that a TV show? Yeah. Okay, so that's probably not going to work perfectly. Um, maybe each individual episode might work. We'll have to talk later. But, um, you know, Harry Potter, every book is kind of its own little cycle like this, right? Where does Harry Potter start every book? Oh, where does he start it? Yeah, Privet Drive in the closet under the stairs or later in the bedroom. But, like, he starts it there, right? Then he goes... Gets on the, you know, nine and three quarters, goes to Hogwarts, you know, into the special world, has some crazy adventure, fights some monster, um, you know, almost dies, survives, gains some, some, you know, new level, some new skill, and then at the end of the book, he goes back home. Except for, like, the later books. It gets kind of wacky, right? But anyway, the first five or six, he does. So total, total match there. Eaters of the Dead? Right? What happens? Do they get a call to adventure in the Eaters of the Dead? Yeah, yeah I think so. And assistance? 
right? You are the 13th man. Do they depart on some quest? All right, do I need to go on? Must I persist? Uh, Eaters of the Dead is a great example. I actually love that book. Um, so we can talk later about that. So what, um, yeah, any other examples? Should we, should we pick another one apart? You're convinced? OK. So good? Goon. I don't know the story. Can you walk us through it? How does it start? Is it fiction or nonfiction? Yeah, that's fiction. Okay, so what, how does, how does, the, you gotta help us out here. He starts out, um, that really not how to play hockey. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> what does that play hockey? Okay. Uh, the parts for the rink. Okay. Begins his trials, what does that play hockey? Does, does, is anybody helping him? Uh, yeah, his best friend, yeah. His best friend, his mentor, okay, great. He goes, he puts on his skates for the first time, gets on the ice, this new special world, never been on the ice before, yeah, right? He gets in fights? See, that's a job. <laughs> okay, all right. Is there a turning point in his... Yeah, when he got called up to the better team, I guess. Yeah. Okay, he, he gets called up to a better team? He got knocked out at first. He gets knocked out, he's got some trials, he gets knocked out. Then he gets called up. I think there's more here. He gets called up to a new level. And then, moment of truth, he goes up against some other bruiser, right? I called it. I called it. Big Red! I knew that was coming. Right? So here he is. He's got to go up against Big Red. Is he going to get knocked down? Or is he going to triumph? What happens? He breaks his ankle. He breaks his ankle. But he still knocks him out. And then, is that the turning point? He comes. So he gets the girl. He gets the girl. There's your treasure right there. He gets the girl. Comes out of this, and then does he does he retire from hockey? No. So okay. So next season, he becomes captain. It's a whole new cycle. Totally works. Thank you. Good job. All right. So. Um, now what we're going to do, let me just sum up. OK, so we talked about um, this, this hero's journey, right? this kind of cycle. And we also talked about, well, we didn't actually. Let me go back and talk about that. Why, um, why do you think this works? Like, why do you think this pattern keeps being reused and recycled in all these stories? Is it just coincidence? It stays interesting. People like the story. It stays interesting. People like the story. It works, someone said. Keeps the, Keeps the story going. Yeah. I mean, all these things are true. Basically, you're saying the same thing. I mean, we, we all share the same brain, right? We all share the same wetware. Um, and this makes sense to us, right? The way we experience our own lives and the way we understand the, you know, the experiences of other people, fictional people, real people, it's all the same. It's through a story. So, so just to sum up, right? So we've got this pattern, this hero's journey um, structure, and we've seen that it underlies, you know, a bunch of different stories, probably except for Blue Mountain State. Um, so now what I want to do is kind of take the next step and talk about how it applies to real life. This is what this is what, what's really interesting for me. So. We're going to use this term, like what makes a hero. I want to define what kind of hero we're talking about. Um, so we talked a lot, we listed a few movies and some, some books earlier. Um, I didn't hear anyone mention, you know, like any of the, the superhero movies. Incredibles. Right, Incredibles, Batman. love that one. Batman, right, Justice League, Wonder Woman, Batman. Flash Spider-Man, right, we got Black Panther coming out February 16th. Captain Excited, Pat America. So that's one, right? Hero, you, see, you hear the word hero, sometimes you know, it pops into your mind, you know, superhero, right? That, that's one category, one definition of hero. Um, second one, did anybody see the um, college football championship game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alabama, Georgia, yeah. right? Tua, Tungavailova. Um, Freshman, right? Second string or third string quarterback. His team's down 0-13 and they bring him in. 
talk about pressure. Like he's not much older than you guys. Pulls in the win. I'm sure, I'm sure his teammates called him a, a hero. So, you know, sports heroes, second category, right? We hear that a lot. Uh, oops, sorry, not yet. Um, third, you ever seen the news, um, you know, someone was drowning and just a passerby noticed it, dove in, saved the drowning person. Or, um, you know, someone falls in on the subway tracks and they get pulled off right before the train comes. So you, know, you hear these stories, kind of everyday people who just, um, right place, right time, and they manage to you know, think on their feet and this heroic deed. So you hear the word hero for that too. And then there are some careers where you're kind of in that position every day. Um, you know, firefighter, cop, soldier, doctor, nurse, that kind of thing. So you hear the word hero around that. The definition I want to use today is much more comprehensive. And it's probably a definition you've heard before. Um, raise your hand if you've ever taken an English class at South Kent or any other school. Should see all the hands up. You're not going to graduate without English credits. You need to take an English class. Okay. All right. So um, in your English class, um, did you read a story? Yes. Okay, yeah. Short story or novel. All right. It wasn't just poems and essays. All right. So you read a story. So after you read the story, you analyzed it, right? Okay. And, and took a test, too. Um, so when you analyzed the story, I'm sure your English teacher asked you or you know, made you identify the main character of the story, the protagonist, right, the hero. So how did you know, you've got all these characters in the story, how did you know which one's the hero? The one that's mentioned the most. Mentioned the most. Most important. Most important. The, one the one narrating, sometimes. Biggest impact, Biggest impact. interesting. Uh, it's any other? Sometimes there's not here. Interesting. We'll come back to that, maybe. Um, so, what, what you know? These these points here. You know, most impact. Um, I don't know if if your English teachers have maybe said you know this is the the kind of the plot um, depends on what the hero does, or the plot follows the hero's actions. Um, Sometimes you know, this hero has agency. Right? The, the decisions that are made by the hero affect the outcome of the story. And a lot of times, you know, the hero changes from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. There's, a, there's an arc. There's a transformation. So the, the definition, you know, all these boil down to, we're going to stick with this tonight. Um, a hero makes decisions and takes action. Right? So for our purposes, um, taking this concept out of the literary world and applying it to the real world. If you make decisions and take actions, you're a hero, okay? And so that means that all of us are heroes, right? Sometimes, um, if we do this. So you, you're all heroes. This morning, you, know, you made the decision to wake up and go to class. Um, and you took that action, right? Did, maybe you made the decision and even woke up and went to assembly. It's kind of early. I was there. Um, so if we stick with, with this decision, or with this definition tonight, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to apply this. So what I want to take, take this concept, and I want to tell you a story. Right? So we're going into the real world, real stories, real people. Um, so this is a story about Cynthia, OK? She's a high school student, um, soccer player. Um, she's good. She's not you know, amazing, but she's, she's good enough to get um, recruited by some college coaches. Um, you know, really fast, um, kind of great stamina. You know, fourth quarter, still running, still outrunning her opponents. And so it's her senior year. You know, she's getting some some offers from colleges. She ends up uh, picking Pace University. Um, they offered her the best scholarship, I think. And then uh, she gets this job at uh, CVS after school. And she's working in the afternoons. And 
this, this guy is coming in, his name's Mike. Um, and, you know, he, he likes her, he stops in, and they end up, um, you know, going out. He takes her bowling, their first, their first date. And um, he offers her a hit of Molly. Right? She takes it, not her first time. But, um, and it's, it's glow bowl, right? It's not just your normal bowling, there's like the black lights. So, you know, they spend more time together. It's her senior year, um, so she goes, they, take, they go to prom together. Then it's summertime, she's working at CVS, and um, she's picking up some more hours, saving up for college. And one day this, this guy comes in, a, a representative from one of the pharmaceutical companies. And he's talking to the pharmacist, telling him about this new medicine. And um, when he leaves, he leaves behind these free samples, like these little boxes. Here we get the little milk duds, for Halloween, it's like tiny little boxes. So he leaves a bunch of these behind. So when the pharmacist isn't looking, Cynthia takes a couple, puts them in her pocket. She shows them to Mike, and Mike says, I think we can get some money for these. He calls a friend, finds out 50 bucks a pill. Can you get some more? So she does. She, um, she ends up actually moving from the kind of cash register job to the pharmacy tech job. So she's helping the pharmacist, you know, fill prescriptions. You know, they've got a whole bunch of pills and she's putting little bottles together, 50 pills, 100 pills, maybe 95 pills, five in her pocket. So she and Mike start making a little money. Um, she goes off to, and they, you know, they're trying these too. They're experimenting. She goes off to college. Um, she's on the soccer team. But she's not, she's not as healthy as she was. It's, uh, she's not as fast as she was either. Um, she starts feeling sick. She actually ends up kind of going home. And um, she moves in with Mike, actually. And she's still working at the pharmacy on the, on the weekends. And then, oh, sorry. Um, she ends up just dropping out of college totally. Um, so she stays, she's living with Mike. They start, you know, kind of ramping up, and they're, they're dealing more drugs, not just the ones she's skimming, but, like, other illegal substances. And they're making a lot of money. She buys herself a car. Um, they take trips to New York, to the islands. Um, one day they go to Six Flags. And, um, you know, before they go in, they're sitting in the car, and, and they get high. And then she goes into the the bathroom to get changed, you know, in her bathing suit, because there's water rides and stuff. And she comes out of the bathroom, Mike grabs her hand and he's running, dragging her through the parking lot. And he's like, they they got guns, let's go. And she's like, what are you talking about? But she, she can barely keep up with him. You know, she's a college soccer player and he's just sprinting across the parking lot, dragging her by the the wrist. Her flip-flops come flying off. She's trying to keep up with him. Her, her feet, she's running through it. It's you know, summertime. It's like 90-degree pavement. And then sprints all the way through this giant parking lot for Six Flags. They get out to the, the entrance, the two-lane highway. He bangs a right. He keeps running. You know, she's just trying to keep up with him, telling him, Mike, calm down, calm down. He's freaking out. They've got guns. They're going to shoot us. They've got guns. Finally, she can't run anymore. Like, her, her feet are all cut up from the gravel and, you know, shattered glass on the side of the highway. He, he picks her up, he puts her on his back, and he keeps going. Her, her feet are dangling here, bleeding all over his shoes and everything. They keep going down. They finally get to, like, a strip mall. She's, she's convinced him, look, just put me down, just set me down. So he sets her down. A woman comes out of a store and is like, what? are you okay? What's going on? Mike freaks out bolts across the road, almost gets smashed by a car, dives into like a gas station store. And, and Cynthia can't do anything. She's like, she can't, she can't walk. She's just, her feet are all screwed up. She's just watching him. And this woman's like, what's wrong? What's going on? You know, are you okay? She's like, I'm fine, don't worry about it. She's like, you're not fine. She calls 911. So Cynthia's sitting there. She looks over at the gas station across the street. All these people are kind of looking in the windows. Like, what's going on? She knows Mike's, something's going on in there with Mike. Sirens, ambulance comes. Everyone's asking her, what are you on? What is he on? Like, what, what did you guys take? And she doesn't tell him. 
They put Mike in the ambulance, her too, go to the emergency room, and they're still asking her, what did you take? She doesn't tell them. I'll come back to that story in a minute. I just want to take a break. Um, so we'll go back to this. So we got, the, we got this pattern, right? We got this formula. And here we got this real story. And I want to test this, right? Does this work? Does this match up? We got any, we got any call to adventure? What, what is it? Yes, what is the call to adventure? Go ahead. Once you started dealing, okay. Mike, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Go to college, yes. Right, so there's a couple options here. Or she's kind of got these two different calls, right? Hey, you've been accepted to college. Hey, here's this guy with this kind of interesting, you know, this interesting thing. He's an interesting guy. He's got this, you know, kind of a new, new angle for you. Um, she ends up, you know, she gets some assistance. She gets a scholarship, right? She gets, here's Mike offering her this access, this new exciting thing. She, d departure, does she leave her ordinary life behind? Yeah, or, go ahead. She goes to live with Mike, yeah. First she goes where? College. College, right? So there's this departure happening. It's kind of two things at once, it's weird. Um, and there's these trials, it gets, it gets messy. So this works for you know, Harry Potter, fighting demons. This works for going to college. This works for you know, getting into a relationship. It works for getting hooked on drugs. It's, it's useful. Um, so Cynthia you know, had some natural abilities, right? And I want to kind of step away from the story, the plot and just look at the character for a second. You know, she, was, she was born with just sort of some natural speed, some natural stamina. She had to learn how to shoot and pass, but um, you know, she came equipped with, with some gifts. Um, and what I want to ask you, just take kind of a sidebar and ask you tonight is, well, let me, let me introduce it this way. Have you ever heard the expression you can't explain water to a fish. You heard that? Yeah? <laughs> You're the only one who nodded your head. Heard You've heard it? Do you know what it means? Like, they know what water is. They're swimming in it like, always. Right, they're swimming in it always. They know what it is, but they don't know they know. It's like, you know it's like, yeah, they just take it for granted. It's like air for us. It's like air for us, right? You just, you just don't really... Think about it, right? You just take it for granted. So, um, so this is my first question to you: Is what what is the water you swim in? Right? And so, one way for for me to explain that would be: Has anyone ever asked you, like, hey, how did you do that? Like that, the, you know, they're really impressed. And like, how did you do that? And you kind of reacted like, what do you mean? Like that's easy. Can't, doesn't everyone do that? You know, like maybe you drew this picture and it just came out perfect, like a photograph. You were like, what? How did you do that? Um, maybe, you know, you're a musician and you like ripped out this solo, or the violin or guitar or whatever, or voice, whatever your instrument is, and people are just like stunned. And you're just like, oh, it's no big deal. Or, um, you know, may maybe something else. Maybe, you know, your friend was having a bad day and you just walked up and just said the right thing to just turn his whole day around. Um, so I'm going to ask you in a second, I'm going to ask you to some brave volunteers to kind of tell me what your, the water you swim in is. But I'll go first, to be fair. So um, when I was, any third formers in the house? Ninth grade? Okay. So when I was exactly your age, when I was ninth grade January, halfway through my ninth grade year, um, my family moved from Kansas to New York. Um, upstate New York, kind of suburban New York, not Manhattan. And, um, and with, by the end of the next year, um, I was president of the class. So right, how did that happen? Like some of the kids even asked me, well, how did you do that? Like you were the new kid last year. How come you're suddenly class president? And I guess the short answer is um, I'm good at making friends. 
And the long answer is, you know, was I born that way? Well, maybe partly, but also I had a lot of practice. So as we were growing up, um, my family moved a lot, moved like every two years. And um, I have three brothers, and we all went through this. Um, it seemed like every time we had just made some friends, our mom would sit us down and say, oh, dad got a new job. You know, guess what? Pack your room. Um, so, you know, it was, it was tough. I mean, you, you're sitting alone on the school bus, you know, sitting at the empty lunch table, standing alone at recess. Um, but, um, you know, after a while, I got used to it. And then started get, to get good at it. And eventually started to look forward to it. You know, like you get a new video game and you put it in and you're like, oh, cool, a new world, you know, get to explore. So um, that's kind of become, you know, the water I swim in. Like, you know, even just meeting you guys. Like, this is fun for me. I like this. So, so now I want to I wanna ask you. And if, you know, if you say something and everyone's going to be supportive, right? We're going we're gonna to support you, maybe even a little applause. No one's going to say, Dude, you're not really that good at that. <laughs> so, um, so who's got the guts to go first? And it, you know, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, it should be something that people have said to you. Like literally, your friend next to you might, might be like, dude, you should say, you're really good at. <laughs> who's up? <laughs> it, it, it could be a little hashtag humble brag. That's fine. <laughs> Help me out here. He's a great dorm dude. Dorm junior. Okay. No, that's an interesting point, right? So leadership, right? Building community, helping kids who need help. That's great. Any other ideas? I, 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 this is part of your assignment for tonight. So hook it up. What do you do? People are like, how did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Great example. Great example. Running. Just running. Yeah. Props. Thank you. All right. All right. Good example. All right. So, you know, keep yours in mind because um, we're going to come back to it later. Now, the second word here. So, this is something that, you know, people have seen. People can see you do this, right? They can see you be a dorm junior. They can see you skate backwards or pass blind or, you know, they can see you run and it's, you know, you finish the race and you're like, yeah, give me another four miles, no problem. Um, so the second thing here I want to ask you about is a little more personal, a little more private. Some, something that you do that nobody might even know about. Right? Something that you do, that you, this activity, this thing that you really enjoy, um, but you don't do it where anyone can really see. So maybe you know you do, maybe you're teaching yourself computer coding, or you you sew your own clothes or something. I don't know. Um, I'll give you a, a, another example for for me. And um, so you know when I was your age and younger, even younger. Um, you know, at night, I would sit at my desk, and oh, I, I need to set this up first. Um, do you guys know what Snapchat is? No. You've heard, you've heard of, you haven't heard of Snapchat? We're going we're to explain it to you. Um, so before Snapchat, there was this thing called email. Email. Do you guys, do you guys know what email is? OK, you guys, because you have a South Kent School email, right? And you need one for your Apple ID, so you have email. Um, well, before there was email, there was just mail, no E. Okay, yeah, not kidding. So we had a piece of paper, we would write things, put it in an envelope. Envelope is also made of paper. It looks like that icon on your phone for your email. Okay. So when I, I told you I moved around a lot as a kid, right? So I used to, at night, I would sit, you know, those first few months at a new town, a new school, it's really lonely. So I would sit at my desk and I would write letters to my friends back in my old hometown. And, you know, sometimes they would write back. It's very exciting to get an envelope in the mail. Um, 
you know, Snapchat, you know instantly what your friend is doing. You know, back then it took about two weeks for me to get that information. Um, so I would read these and I would reply immediately and, you know, mail it back. Um, and after a while, you know, I'd save these letters. I'd put them in these shoe boxes. And after a while, I had a few shoe boxes. And, and by the time I was your age, I had like a closet full of shoe boxes. Um, and people would see that and they'd be like, that's crazy. Like, what's going on here? Um, so I'm curious if anyone has the guts here. Like, is there something that you do that's a little, you know, that maybe you keep it a secret or maybe not, but it would surprise me to learn. I pray every night. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe this is your secret fire, right? What else? Do you go to Compline? Uh, Sometimes. <laughs> what, you got your hand up? Oh, OK. Anyone else? Maybe you draw comic books. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you mix beats. You got one? Oh, you do? Come on. Come on, water. Let's hear it. What, you, it, it, can you tell me? Can you tell me? Right. Secret fire. Who's got this? Secret fire. Yeah? Go ahead. Kenny, can can he? is it okay? May, may he? You like to design shoes. All right. No, that's cool. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Seriously. You know, the people, the people who designed the shoes that you're all wearing, right, all the shoes you're wearing were designed by someone. And all those people were, you know, one, at one time 16 designing shoes. Like, they didn't just... They didn't just look through the want ads in the newspaper and stumble on it, right? They, they've been working on it. So that's, and I have news for you. Even if you've got this, you know, something secret that you just don't want to tell me, I respect that. Um, but these two things, right, this water that you swim in and this secret fire, these things are going to stick with you for, for your whole life, right? I hope. I mean, this, me writing these letters, I, you know, just using language and kind of building relationships. I'm, you know, this has definitely been a theme, right? Here I, you know, published a book last year. I mean, that's writing and building relationships is, you know, a big part of what I've been doing. Now I'm, now I'm not just writing letters to my friends, you know, at 12 years old. I'm sending emails all around the world and, you know, developing correspondence with people through Twitter and Facebook and, you know, my website and all these things. So it'll stick with you, right? Maybe not designing shoes, maybe designing something else, but um, you know, all these things are going are to carry on. OK, so we'll come back to these things, but I wanted to just depart slightly. Um, and now I want to tell you another story. So yeah, <laughs> we will come back to Cynthia part two. But first, I want to do Colin. Um, is there someone in the house named Colin? All right, this is a, this is a different Colin. <laughs> Not that Colin. Um, so this Colin, um, good friend of mine. So he started, we're starting, we're, we're, we're meeting Colin. He's a happy little kid, um, you know, living with his mom. He's got, you know, he's got a bunch of aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, friends. Um, and he's in kindergarten, OK? So, it's June, and the kindergarten teacher passes out handfuls of clay and says to all the kindergarten kids, you know, make something nice for your dad for Father's Day. So Colin takes the clay, and he's like, mm, puts it aside, and he's like working on blocks or something. He's building something. And the um, teacher's going around the room, like checking on different kids, and she comes up to Colin, and she says, hey, how come you're not, uh, you know, making a pinch pot or something for Father's Day? And he says, well, I don't have a father. And she says, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Everyone has a father. Doesn't. So that really shattered his reality. Um, until that moment, he had thought of himself and his family as complete whole. 
And that really set him on this journey to kind of understand that and solve that puzzle. Everyone has a father? Why don't I have a father? If I, if I have one, who, who is he? So this, you know, through elementary school, um, you know, this kind of haunted him and may have played into the fact that he was kind of a, you know, a troublemaker, kind of acting out, kind of full of mischief um, in school. And then finally, he was uh, about seven years old, and um, his mom could see that he was you know, troubled and kind of brooding. And it was, uh, it was like December, and she asked him, well, she wants to cheer him up, and she asked, what do you want for Christmas? And he just says, I just want to know who my father is. And kind of shocked himself by actually saying it out loud. Um, and his mom was shocked too. This was not an easy question. She, um, eight years earlier, she had been young and reckless and with a drinking problem. And um, the same weekend that she broke up with her boyfriend, she went to a party and ended up waking up next to some other guy. And a couple months later, she found out she was pregnant. And she was too ashamed to tell either of them. So she just raised Colin herself. Um, but here it is now, eight years later. And he's asking this question. And he deserves an answer. So she makes some awkward phone calls. You know, there's DNA tests, lawyers. And then finally, we're in the county courthouse. And actually, I was there, sitting next to Colin. Through that door um, is the courtroom. And Colin's mom is in there. And, there. and there's a judge in there telling a man that she hasn't seen in eight years that Colin has his DNA. That he has a son he didn't know about. <clears throat> so the door's open. And Kelly comes out. And, you know, Colin stands up like, wow, finally, you know, this is the moment. I'm gonna meet my father. It, you know, are we gonna hug? Are we gonna shake hands? And this man, stranger, comes behind Kelly. He's got a mustache. And then he walks right out the building. I want you to accept that challenge, right? Accept that call to adventure and go on that hero's journey. All right? As you leave. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, what was your secret fire? Um, yeah, question? What college I went to? Um, I, I actually left high school after junior year and went to Simons Rock College, part of Bard College. Yeah. And then after that year, um, I transferred to the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. You ever heard of that one? Prince, Prince William went there. Prince William and Kate Middleton? Yeah, he went there. Um, I think she went there too. Um, and then after that, I wasn't, I wasn't finished yet. So then uh, I, I got a master's degree in Japanese language and society from the University of Sheffield in England um, while I was living in Japan. And then I got a master of fine arts degree in creative writing from Fairfield University, Fairfield in Connecticut. So, um, yeah, I, I I love studying, I love education. And, and interestingly, right, Japanese language, creative writing, words. It's my secret fire.